me. And so I, the next time I come back, I hope you don't say that you're sick of my commercials too, but you're going to start seeing a lot of them because it's really one of the only ways we have to do that in order to get the word out. You're listening to the Commonwealth Club of California radio program. Our guest today is Steve Poisner, California Insurance Commissioner and Republican candidate for governor of California. Um, it wasn't all that long ago that you were saying uh, that you were a moderate Republican, that you were saying that you would stand up to Republican Party bosses, that the right wing of the Republican Party does not represent me. Um, when we talk about evolution of political beliefs, very often it's on the scale of decades. This is on the scale of six years. So how are we to, to distinguish uh, an evolution of beliefs from a politically expedient hard turn to the right? Well, I do know that my political opponent wants to characterize it that way. Maybe some people in the press do. Uh, but the fact is, I, I've, been a, I've been a conservative my whole life, and I'm proud of it. I mean, the, somehow the word conservative got a you know, bad name somewhere along the line. I don't know why. But um, do you remember the show Family Ties? So I was the Alex P. Keaton of my household, I mean, the, 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 the only Republican in the Democratic household. So I've been a you know, conservative all my life, a Republican all my life. Um, you know, I'm also fiercely independent. I'm not a highly, I'm not a partisan warrior, you know, where I, where I want to go fight for, you know, you know, the Republican cause per se. I'm a conservative. I'm, I'm proud to be a Republican. I'm running, you know, to be the Republican nominee, but I'm, I, when I'm really, what I'm really after here is to be everyone's governor. It's not really a partisan cause, it's a California, cause about all of California. So I will say this though, over the last several years, I've, I've, my, my conservative views have crystallized uh, ever since I've, I've been in Sacramento. I gotta tell you, the, the culture of corruption there, really terrible, and the amount of taxpayer waste, and the amount of inefficiency, and how quickly you know they want to raise taxes or borrow more money. I got to tell you, it's been a fantastic experience being insurance commissioner, and now I have a really crystal clear vision and, and plan of where the state needs to go. So what you see is what you get in this campaign. I'm not running to one side and then running to the other in the general election. I mean, the platform that I outlined is my platform in the primary and the general election. And, and I, I guess I must say I've grown as a person and as a political leader. Um, Evolved somewhat, but you know, pretty much the same person I've always been. Well, let, let's uh, sort of aggregate a couple of questions here and, and build off of what you just said. Uh, if being in Sacramento has crystallized your your conservative beliefs somewhat, uh, couldn't the devil's advocate basically say you went to a hyper partisan town where the legislature is essentially locked in gridlock every year on just about everything, and you in fact have gone far to one side? And how will that work out as a governor uh, dealing with a, a, a legislature that is, seems to be almost irreparably gridlocked and is controlled by Democrats? Yeah, well, when I say far to one side, per se, I mean, it's, it's um, I am what I am. You could put labels on it. I think conservative is a good label in the sense of, I mean, I believe in certain principles that I think a lot of Democrats believe in, a lot of independents. A lot of Tea Party types, a lot of non-Tea Party types, a lot of Republicans. I mean, I believe in individual liberty. I think this is a fantastic country. I think my most important duty as governor is to protect everyone's individual liberty. I believe in personal responsibility. That seems to be completely lost in the conversation these days. I think that we need to get that back in the conversation. I'm passionate about free markets and want to set up healthy competition for consumers. And I do believe in smaller and more accountable government. And I'm going to be campaigning on those issues. With regards to, maybe another way to phrase your, you know, part of your question is how on earth are you going to get anything done? Right. Um, and that's a really good question. And probably I must say the hardest question I get, and, and maybe the most important question I get, no easy answers. Uh, I, let me just say that I run for governor with a full appreciation of the level of difficulty. I mean, we, we've gotten into this mess over a period of many years. It'll take a lot of work to get out of the mess. I have a three-part plan. It's not, you know, there's no silver bullets. I, I can't guarantee it. But I know that if we don't try, the state of California is going to go off a cliff. So the first part of my plan is to be very specific about what I believe, my core principles, and my, my reform agenda, so that before anyone votes for me, they know exactly what they're getting in great detail. And then when they elect me, they're sending me to Sacramento with marching orders, with a mandate. And that will give me extra political capital. 
The second part of my plan to get something done is to utilize the power of the governor's office like it's never been utilized before. Now, you know, the governor on paper in California is very powerful. The appointments power, the line item veto power, the statute veto power. I plan to, to use that authority in a very focused, concentrated way on my reform agenda. We've got to get the economy back on track. We've got to bring jobs back, and that's what's going to be my focus. Finally, if, if the legislature does block all of my reform efforts, then we have no choice. We have to go directly to the people with, with a single issue, very specific, short and sweet, ballot initiatives that will, will reform California no matter what. I mean, the alternative is not thinkable, right? If we don't fix the state of California, we're going to get steamrolled. Now, some of the ballot initiatives that I will back, if I have to, uh, include converting the legislature from full-time to part-time. If I could get away with it, I would, I would create it, you know, go from full-time to no-time, but I can't do that. <laughs> the fact is, 42 states have a part-time legislature. I do think a part-time legislature would change the whole mix of people in the legislature. Uh, that's a ballot initiative that I think would overhaul the way the whole town operates. California had a part-time legislature. We had a part-time legislature from 1850 to 1967. And honestly, I think we began to deteriorate as a state when the legislature became full-time. And you get people from both parties that specialize in politics, and that is a mistake. We want people that come from the trenches. So anyhow, that's, that's my plan of action. It won't be easy. I'm sure you'll be following everything I do very closely, but we're going to get this state back on track because the alternative is unthinkable. Now, you're not the first Republican governor to say, if I can't get the uh, legislature to work with me, I'll go straight to the people at the ballot box. And you know how that turned out. Uh, do you believe that, there's a, 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 that, there will be, that those voters will be there for you when they were not uh, there for these, the, this last special election that this, this current governor called? Well, um, Governor Schwarzenegger and I you know, are pretty good friends. Uh, we disagree on lots of things. Um, people ask me if, 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 uh, if the governor, Governor Schwarzenegger, can't get it done, how on earth are you going get, to get it done? Now, one thing I can say for sure is no one's ever confused me for Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. The poisonator. <laughs> so I do have a black belt. I think I could take him if I had to. <laughs> it's, it's a man, it's, you know, when the governor got elected in the recall, things were pretty bleak, but the unemployment rate was half what it is today. You have to zero in, I think, on the, on, the, on the fact, the issue that we're in a meltdown crisis of ethnic proportions, and Republicans, Democrats, and independents alike have had it and are looking for big, bold changes. See, the, the change is going to have to come from the people, uh, like it has in some other states. And I really do think that we've got to take advantage of this crisis. And that's why, I'm, as I said a moment ago, I'm just so excited about running for governor right now, because a few years ago, I don't think I could have been as successful as I can be now. Given, given the, the, that we're at the brink. And so what voters haven't had, I don't think in a long time, is someone to run for office, say what they mean, have a track record to back up their ability to get things done, and then fight like heck. And I can promise you this, I will have the tenacity and the backbone and the will to not budge. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be rigid because you've got to get things done, but you can't be compromising so quickly. They're, they're always watching and seeing if you'll, if you'll flinch now, on certain things, you just can't flinch. And getting the state's economy back on track is going to require some big, bold changes to our tax and our regulatory system. And I'm going to get it done one way or the other. You fail the first time, you do it again. Now, the current governor just didn't have the, the long-term passion for reform. He got beat pretty badly and moved on to other things. I think that was a mistake. Well, this has been mostly politics. Let's let's get specific and down in the weeds on some policy here. We've got a huge pile of questions, with, uh, which are basically all the same. Uh, is college uh, is college education a right or a privilege, and what are you going to do to make it more affordable? As a as a, as a parent who's about to send uh, my daughter to higher education to, to college or university here, hopefully in California. Um, I'm, I'm really care about this issue, of course. I do think our higher education system is a crown jewel of California. And we've studied it pretty closely. You know, every dollar we invest in, in, a, in our higher education system, we get a four times return. I mean, it's a fantastic investment. But you know, taxpayers do highly subsidize our college system. You know, about, uh, believe it or not, 90% of the costs of community colleges paid by taxpayers. 
about 50% of the state universities